Hi there, and welcome to another Pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. This is a re-upload for the video about conjunctive normal form with hopefully better audio, and you get to see my face now. Now, if you've already seen the video on the disjunctive normal form, this uh, video is going to take a similar approach. What we're going to do is we're going to take a formula and rewrite it to be in the conjunctive normal form using two different methods. But first, very briefly to remind you, what is this conjunctive normal form? Well, it's a form for a propositional statement that is very specific. It is a conjunction of disjunctions. As an example, A or B and C or D is an example of a formula in conjunctive normal form. It is a conjunction of disjunctions. Now let's see how we can get there from a formula like not B and Q if and only if R. Our goal is to rewrite this into something that is in C and F. So how do we do this? Well, there's two methods. Let's start with the first one. The first is to just use our rewrite rules, the ones that we know from propositional logic. And what we do is we try and rewrite the formula in such a way that we try and get closer and closer and closer to C and F, and then hopefully end up in C and F in the end. There is no one fixed strategy that always works. You have to play around a bit with the rules, get a feeling for which rules to apply when. So let's give that a go. Not P and Q, if and only if, R. Okay, well, one thing I know for sure is that an if and only if, I don't want that ever in my C and F. So I want to try and get rid of that. Now, I'm also quite a lazy guy. Uh, writing down not P and Q every single time, not great, um, especially since uh, I know that rewriting if and only if splits it into two split statements can be maybe a bit of work. How about for now, we introduce a variable A to just represent this conjunction of P and Q. Then this thing reads not A if and only if R. And let's see how far we can get with this one first. So not A if and only if R. Well, I can split that into two implications. Not R, R. A implies R. And R implies, oh, not an implication here. That should be an and. Not A implies R, and R implies not A. Okay, um, we have an and in the middle, conjunction for conjunctive normal form. That sounds good. Now we just have these two implications. That's not so good, so let's try and get rid of those. Uh, a rule I know to get rid of an implication is to rewrite it to a disjunction. You may remember that P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. So let's apply that rule. That gets us not not A, so that's A or R, and not R or not A. Hey, and would you look at that? This thing is in C and F. It is a conjunction of disjunctions with negations only in front of single literals. Except, well, except we were cheating a bit. A isn't a single literal, remember. A is actually P and Q. So, yes, this looks like it's C and F, but not when we actually substitute P and Q back in. So let's do that. And what do we get? Well, we get that I first need to scroll. And then we get uh, P and Q or R, and not R, or not P and Q. Hmm. Okay, uh, well, this is no longer in CNF. There is a negation here in front of a uh, conjunction. We don't allow that. And there is a conjunction inside a disjunction here, and CNF doesn't allow that either. So let's see if we can get rid of both of these problems, starting with the one on the left. P and Q or R, we can use the, um, is it called the distributive law? Pretty sure it is. To rewrite that to P or R and Q or R. OK, 
Okay, that's the left rewritten. And then the right, uh, not R, or let's apply the Morgan here to get rid of the negation, not P or not Q. Hmm, are we there yet? Well, let's see, what have we got? We've got a conjunction of a disjunction. Good, the right half seems fine. But the left half, it's again a conjunction. Ah, okay. But they're commutative. So that means we can get rid of these parentheses. And voila, we have something that is in CNN. We have conjunctions of disjunctions. Not the prettiest formula I've ever seen, but it's in CNF, and that was the goal. Now let's take a look at a different method. You may remember from the video about this, 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 the, the distributive normal form. Why do I keep calling it that? Uh, the disjunctive normal form, sorry. Uh, you may recall from the video about the disjunctive normal form that we could use a K-map to find the uh, equivalent DNF. Now, we can also use a K-map to find a CNF. If you don't know what K-maps are, it's a little bit outside of the sco scope of this course. This is the only method that I trust you should be able to do after following reasoning and logic. But K-maps are a very useful utensil that you learn about in computer organization, CSE 1400. Oh, and that's not possible to write that here, okay. CSE 1400. Uh, and they also serve some purposes in reasoning and logic. So as a reminder, what's a K-map? Well, K-map is basically a fancy truth table. Only they may like to make it 2D for some reason. Where the ordering is like this. And here we just fill in the value for this formula if P is false and Q and R are also both false. Now I'm quickly going to pause the video and fill out the truth table. This is something that I trust you will be able to do by yourself, or if not, then you can just verify my work later. So let me pause the video here and I'll come back when I have a filled in truth table for you. Sorry, K map for you. And there we go, a filled in K map. Now in DNF, you may recall that we do the computer organization thing. We find the minimal sum of products. DNF. Uh, and we circle the ones and then do our magic from there. For CNF, what we're actually going to do is we're going to apply a little trick. Rather than focusing on the ones, we are going to focus on the zeros instead. So what groups of zeros do we have? Well, we have a group of zeros. This is a horrible pen. Can I just have a regular blue one? Thank you very much. We have a group of zeros here. We have a group of zeros here. Remember that in a K-map you can wrap around. And we have a group of zeros here. Still a group, just a one. Now let's apply the logic that we would normally apply to find our minimal sum of products only to the zeros. So let's write down the expression for this thing. Well, P is, uh, is the one that changes. Q and R are the ones that are fixed, so it's not Q and not R. Then the group in red, P is uh, one that's fixed, Q is the one that changes, and R is the one uh, is another one that's fixed. So this one is uh, not P and not R. And finally. The one here all on its own, everything is fixed there. It is P and Q and R. And I need to move my screen over slightly so that my tablet can reach this area of the screen. All right. Okay, but um, this is DNF and worse, it's DNF for the zeros rather than the ones. Hmm, but hang on, if I want the ones, then what I should be doing is I should be negating this whole thing. Right? I don't want the zeros. I want the ones. 
But what happens when I negate this? Well, then I apply the Morgan's law and I get not, not Q and not R and not, not P and not R and not P and Q and R. Okay, let's apply the Morgan again on each of these conjunctions. And we get Q or R and P or R and P, uh, not P or not Q or not R. Hey, that's exactly the same as we got to before. And it's in CNF. So method two is to use a K map, but rather than go for the ones, go for the zeros, write an expression in DNF for the zeros, negate it and apply the Morgan twice. So there you have it. Two methods to go from a propositional formula to an equivalent propositional formula in the conjunctive normal form. See you around for the next one.